it's Nicole the Math Lady. Today we're talking about parallelograms. We'll be talking about angles of a parallelogram and also the area of a parallelogram. Take a look at the example on the board. Here you can see we have a parallelogram and all I've given you about this parallelogram is one of the angles is 125 degrees. Now let's even just back up for a second. What does parallelogram even mean? It means it's a figure that has two sets of parallel sides. So we've got here, one here and here, that's one set, and here and here, that's another set. Okay, so back to our 125 degrees. How can we use this information to find out the other angles of this parallelogram? There's two things I want to introduce you to. The first one is is that the adjacent angles of a parallelogram. Remember, adjacent means the ones that are next to each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these uh, a, a, a label, A, B, C, and D. So if this is angle A, an adjacent angle would be angle B. Another adjacent angle would be angle D. So what do we know? We know that adjacent angles are supplementary angles. And supplementary angles means that they add up to 180 degrees. So, for example, angle A plus angle B is going to equal 180 degrees. Let's substitute what we know. We know that angle A is 125 degrees plus angle B will give us 180. All we have to do now is do some subtraction. Angle B it's going to be 180 minus 125. And you know me, I like doing my math over to the side, so let's do it. 180 minus 125 gives us 55 degrees. So angle B equals 55 degrees. Let's write that in. 55. Now, I told you that the adjacent angles to angle A are going to be supplementary. So that also means that angle D will also equal 55 degrees. Okay? All right, we're more than halfway there. So we've got angle A is 125. Angle B and angle D are both 55 degrees. Another thing I want to introduce you to is that non-adjacent angles of a parallelogram are equal. That's right. So that means that the non-adjacent angle here is angle C. It's the only angle that's not next to angle A. It means that it is equal to angle A, so angle C is 125 degrees. And there you go. Now, here's the final test. If all these angles add up to 360 degrees, because all of the angles should add up to 360, we've done our job. Let's check it out. Well, I'm going to do a little erasing over here. Hold on. And we're going to add 125, 125, 55, and 55. All right, 5, 4 times is 20. 5 and 5 is 10, 12, 14, 16, and 3. Look at that. They all add up to 360 degrees, so we've done our job correctly. Let's look at another example. Here I have a parallelogram. I'm only giving you one angle, but let's find all of the degrees or the measurements of the other angles. Okay, so angle F is 135 degrees. So what does that tell us? Well, we know that the adjacent angles will be supplementary. They will add up to 180. So that's angle G and angle E. Well, let's do the math. 180 minus 135 is 45 degrees. That means that this angle is 45 and this angle is 45. What do we also know about parallelograms? The non-adjacent angle is equal to the angle. So angle F and angle D, they're both equal. They're opposite each other. And that tells us that angle D is 135 degrees. That's it. Pretty simple. That's a nice little summary of the angles of a parallelogram. Now let's talk about the area of a parallelogram. Now remember, when we're talking about area, 
we're talking about how do we find the space that's inside the lines of the parallelogram. That's what we're looking for. And I'm going to give you right away the formula for a parallelogram for the area is base times height, but it's important for me to talk to you about what base and height represents. Let's start with the base. The base is the easy part. The base here is what it's sitting on. This nice long side is our base, and that's going to be 5. Okay, so area equals 5 times, but now we're talking about the height. And it looks like you've got this side here that says 4, but that is not our height. Often when you are shown the area of a parallelogram, there will be this dotted line that is drawn in. That dotted line is essentially if we were going to drop a right angle onto our parallelogram. And this right angle could be here on that side, it could be here in the middle, it could be over here. It doesn't matter where, but it is a right angle. And it will give you a length for that side that touches the top and the bottom. So here, I'm going to give you that length, it's going to be a 3. That 3 is what we call the height. So the height of a parallelogram is that dotted line where they have dropped in that right angle. That is the number you use, not this number 4 here. Okay, so we're doing base times height, our height is 3. 5 times 3 means our area is 15. Now, I forgot to give you a label, here we go, inches. Okay, so it's going to be 15 inches, and our labels for area are always squared. Here's my little two, 15 inches squared. So area equals base times height. Take a look at this example. We want to find the area of this parallelogram. Remember the formula? Area equals base times height. So our base is going to be 5, and our height is going to be Seven. That's where that dotted line is that drops in that 90 degree angle. 5 times 7 is 35. I forgot to give you a label again. 35 centimeters squared. Okay, that's it. Angles and area of a parallelogram. Definitely check out the practice problem so you can drill doing a few of these examples. Okay, that's it for me today. I'll talk to you next time. Yeah, have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you.